Oh, good night. Iron Horse here just had a little bit of an epiphany. And so I'm just going to get it off my chest now while I'm thinking of it because it's a bit of a tripper. It's about five, uh, 325 now, so 1525. When I took the picture, I think the only way I can add it in the picture to this is possibly I'd have to do it as the um, thumbnail for the video if I can remember how to edit thumbnails. It's, you get a lot of limited options when you're only on the phone, so I'll see what I can do. But the picture right of the uh, big shout out to Flat Earth Dave, David Weiss, and his Sun, Moon and Zodiac Clock app, because this I just took a screenshot of it at 3.17 or 15.17, and basically it's saying that here in Australia, actually I don't know if that's where Australia is on the image and of course I can't look at it because I'm videoing if I go out of the video it will stop videoing and I can't stitch them together that's how good I am at phones and stuff so anyway regardless of where Australia might be on it I think it's more over here somewhere or here but the point of the fact matter is that that's I just want to talk about daylight and how if the sun obviously it's not there because the, the clock hand, is, if it's pointing here, is coming out from the centre. And then the sun, <laughs> let's get all technical here, the sun is on the equator. So that's where it is at the moment, as you can see, pretty much halfway between the terminator line. So that's the terminator line there. And that's not part of this discussion. Um, I just thought because I had the circle already drawn, I'd just take advantage of it and put some numbers around it and show. So wherever the sun is, this quadrant of night time, that's all the night there. I'm not going to shade it in, you can just look it up on the app. Pay you two ninety nine, you cheap bastards. <laughs> um, so that's the darkness and all this is sunlight with the terminator lines roughly there. Now, so you would think then, well, how is it stretching out further here, but stopping there, stretching out further there, stopping there? And this is the little epiphany that came to me. In fact, here it is right here, the book I only just read last week, um, The Da Vinci Code, I'm sure many of you have heard of it, Dan Brown's Da Vinci Code. It's set in a lot of factual places and one of the settings where a lot of the stuff happens, I think even the opening scene, is the Louvre. It's a famous museum in France. And it talks, and it doesn't seem to have much to do with the actual story, but it mentions it quite a few times. It's involved in the story, is that in modern times, against the backdrop of this ancient architecture, which is no doubt Tartarian in nature, <laughs> um, They've built a modern glass pyramid. So it's apparently it's got 666 panels of glass in it. You can't really make that stuff up, can you? This is true. So I don't. I haven't actually fact checked fact checked that myself, but I believe that everything in this book is so authentic that I tend to believe it. And it says though somewhere, I don't know where. So I've never been there. I haven't seen enough about it to know this. 100% for sure, but it talks about an inverted pyramid as a skylight. So it must be to some underground place because in the story it's mentioned that if you cut through a particular hedge, you can't, so they couldn't take a shortcut through it because they ran the risk of driving into this inverted glass pyramid skylight. Hmm, so it made me think, how could it make that shape of sunlight is if our sky we've got a pyramid right yeah, that's the normal pyramid what do they say well if you looked at it from above Something like that. It's pretty wonky kind of 
Again. A little bit better. Sitting down here, it's hard to do. Stand up, I can't because I couldn't be bothered. So that's what a pyramid looks like from top down. So a pyramid from top down looks identical from if it was inverted. It's, that was at the bottom of an inverted. So it would look like that from underneath. So what do they say, as above, so below? What if a firmament is a pyramid, inverted pyramid shaped type of dome? You know, uh, Jaron was hinting at the bunt cake pan the other day, shape, and there's something to be said for that. You know, an M shape would, in fact, be an inverted pyramid. So the walls and the Feminine chalice, the cup, could be the shape of our firmament. Now it would be quite a shallow one because it's got spread out over, you know, the, what is it? It's 40,000 kilometers here. I've got to learn to do this in kilometers. So if it's 40,000 kilometers around, that means from there to there is 10,000, from there to there's another 10,000. So I think that makes the diameter 14,000, so the radius is 7,000. Round figures, I think the radius is about 7,000 kilometers. So, well then the diameter, so each of these would be 7,000 kilometers. Um, no, it'd be much more because that's just the spinning space ball figures. It's 7,000 to the equator. So we actually have to double it, 14, and so it's 28,000 at least each side of the big shallow M. Now if the pyramid above was the all-seeing eye, the sun, and it's shining down into this one, the skylight, well, you know, it'd be more like, like this, so it's beaming out there. So if it's beaming into the equator from there to there, as it goes around for the day, then that light could get distorted sufficiently so that only that much is in darkness. So it's a theory I'm working with. So now we've got to take out all the sharp edges. <laughs> it's got to be a, a cone sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm, Bloody awful at drawing. But if you know what I mean, instead of a just an M, it's a M mm, all the way around. So it's an inverted cone. Really flattened out. Um, the light shining onto it would make the sun look more perfectly circular as well as it does look to us. You know, it's not if we're shining onto a flat surface, it should look a little bit more elliptical, ellipsoidical, a um, bit more egg-shaped, oval-shaped, but if the sky itself is a bit angled upwards out towards Antarctica, then as the sun gets lower and lower for the seasons, as we suspect it does, the angle of incidence then hits further and further south, because it's hitting up, up higher on the southern arm, that would create enough light potentially to spread all the way around with that coffee cup caustic effect and give as much as 17 hours of sunlight per day in places like Ushuaia in southern Argentina. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, southern America. <laughs> um, yeah, and then as the sun then gets higher again, it creates a smaller circle. So, you know, it would look to be going around the as it points into the inverted cone, it's hitting the wall, you know, out to the Tropic of Capricorn, and then as it gets higher again, it drags it more down until it gets to the Tropic of Cancer around there, which gives summer in the north, and it makes the sun appear to come from the far north to us here in Australia, so it gives us winter. That's um, definitely worth a mention and put through the... Um, the hive mind, as we like to call it, of fellow flat earthers, to put it in your pipe and smoke it and think about it. It's a, um, a 
possibility as above, so below. The sun's the tip of the pyramid, the chalice, the mother earth, is where the sun turns into visible light and life. So it's the combination of the father above, mother below. That's what they keep hiding from us. It's the mother earth. It's the, the mother earth is the most important thing. That's what I'm actually writing another song about, which I have to do shortly, uh, about Oli Moroa. That's my name for Australia, and it literally doesn't just translate as the big island to the west. It means Mother Earth, as far as I'm concerned. We're all a part of it. So um, thanks for listening, and tell me what you think. Cheers. Have a good one.